Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your news report, second seamless check update, and second seamless package update. Now before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe to my channel, click the notifications bell, and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. If you think that Congress should pass the stimulus bill right now. Now folks, we have breaking news from Speaker Pelosi, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, and Larry Kudlow. By the way everybody, who do you think is to blame for holding back our second stimulus checks? Is it Mitch McConnell or is it Speaker Pelosi? Tell me what you think in the comments down below. But they're not ending. I mean, one thing I will say is the uh, committee chairman on both sides, Senate and House, have been meeting and discussing various aspects, you know, the small business loans and uh, many other issues, of different appropriations. Uh, we'll get a report uh, this morning. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin will be talking to them. I, I think he's going to be talking to Speaker Pelosi. Uh, the big issue here right now is we're close, but there are still important policy issues that separate us. And um, our team believes there have to be more compromises on the House side uh, for us to get there. Um, Becky, I don't want to be optimistic. I don't want to be pessimistic. I'm just kind of reporting where I think we are. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin okay. will probably speak on it later today after he checks in with the speaker and some of the committee chairman and see if anything moves. But right now, unfortunately, uh, the goalposts have moved. There's still some uh, unanswered questions. Hey, Larry, uh, we had Governor Sununu on from New Hampshire earlier today, and, and he says that he'd like to see every member of Congress fired, all 535 of them, because the American people are suffering while this stimulus bill gets booted back and forth. He says, forget it. We'd be better off if we had brand new uh, congressional representation all the way across the board because of this. I just want to ask, as, as an economist, what happens if we don't see anything done between now and, let's say, early February? Well, look, I, you know my view that this is a strong V-shaped recovery. I mean, lots of new numbers have come in. The third quarter is going to be a very positive quarter, no question about that. And just recently, we've had big, big numbers on housing sales and uh, home builder sentiment and retail sales and uh, manufacturing, um, inventories have to be rebuilt, uh, even continuing claims plunged a million last week. So look, I, I think that the recovery, uh, though there's a lot more work to do, let me be clear on that, especially on the employment side, nonetheless is proceeding probably faster than most folks thought. So I'll make that point. Second point is we've always argued, you've heard me say this, I think, certain areas could be helped by a deal. OK, particularly, let me repeat, uh, I'd like to see unemployment assistance. You know, the president led with a uh, executive order on unemployment assistance to three hundred dollars plus a hundred bucks in the states. That's running out. So it would be a good thing. We put half half the people have gone back to work. We didn't put them to work, but half of them have gone back to work. I'd like to see some assistance on the unemployment side. I think the PPP small business would be extremely helpful. I think anything to do with helping uh, schools open uh, COVID-19 related uh, renovations, they need some help. The airlines need some help. In other words, there are specific targeted areas. We don't need a gigantic ideological political bill here. Treasury. When the time comes <clears throat> after the crisis has passed, we will put these emergency tools back in the toolbox. As I've emphasized before, these are lending powers, not spending powers. The Fed cannot grant money to particular beneficiaries. We can only create programs or facilities with broad-based eligibility to make loans to solvent entities with the expectation that the loans will be repaid. Many borrowers are benefiting from these programs, as is the overall economy. But for many others, getting a loan that may be difficult to repay may not be the answer. In these cases, direct fiscal support may be needed. Elected officials have the power to tax and spend and to make decisions about where we as a society should direct our collective resources. The fiscal policy actions that have been taken thus far have made a critical difference to families, businesses, and communities across the country. <clears throat> Even so, the current economic downturn is the most severe in our lifetimes. It will take a while to get back to the levels of economic activity and employment that prevailed at the beginning of this year. And it may take continued support from both monetary and fiscal policy to achieve that. 
I'd like to mention a couple of changes that we plan on making to our summary of economic projections beginning in December. First, we will release the entire package of SEP materials at the same time that the, F the OFOMC statement comes out. <clears throat> Previously, some of these materials were released three weeks after the meeting as part of the minutes. This step will make more information available at the time of our policy announcements, including the distributions of forecasts and how participants judge the uncertainty and risks that attend their projections. <clears throat> Second, we will add two new graphs that show how the balance of participants' assessments of uncertainty and risks have evolved over time. These changes to the SEP will provide a timely perspective on the risks and uncertainties that surround the modal or baseline projections, thereby highlighting some of the risk management considerations that are relevant for monetary policy. To conclude, we understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. That's the case for, for, uh, for all different measures in the, in the labor force, in the labor market, rather. Another would be claims. Just about all the data were showed a big bounce back, but then, as you would expect, when, when you sort of had people, a lot of people go to back at, to work at once, the pace will moderate. Same thing with economic activity. Most forecasts call for, you know, still a significant growth in the fourth quarter, but not at the 33 percent annualized pace that we had in the third quarter. So in a sense, that would be, that would be as expected. Uh, we have been concerned that uh, the downside risks, um, though, are, are, are prevalent now, which are, which are really the risk of the further spread of the disease and also the risk that, <clears throat> that um, uh, households will run through the savings they've managed to accumulate on their balance sheet and that, that, that that could weigh on activity. But what we see up to the present really is continued growth, continued expansion. Our heroes, they're out there. They're fighting health care workers, first responders, police and fire, sanitation, transportation, food workers, our teachers, our teachers, our teachers. And the president says it's a matter of pride that he not support them. Uh, then we have safe schools. We should be, most of the schools in our country could be open actually if we would take the scientific approach. It takes money. It takes more money uh, than they are willing to put up and we're asking uh, for their response in that regard. To have more space, therefore more teachers, ventilation, sanitation, technology, to enable our children to actually attend school. Children learning, parents earning, so parents can go to work. In the absence of that, we also want them to put more money for child care. If the children are not going to school, the parents cannot go to work unless we have more funding for child care and they just will only go so far and that's what we're asking them to, to go farther. Again, 8 million families as the CARES benefits fade away, 8 million people, more people on, uh, have fallen into poverty. There's a way out of that. Child tax credit. Said folks, that is all the news in today's video. If you found this video useful, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell. Thank you for watching everybody. Until next time, have a great day.